Good morning and let me give you a very warm welcome if you're watching online this morning to our online church service here in Brins Iron. It's different but it's good and it's good that we can worship the Lord here and in our homes around out there and if you're tuning in from further afield or around the community we give you an extra special welcome this morning. Um, this morning is also Mother's Day and we'd just like to say from the outset this morning um, to all the special women in our lives um, we hope you have a wonderful day, you deserve it. Um, I know it's going to be different to normal but we are praying for you that you have a, a wonderful day today. Um, this morning um, Andrew is going to come and he's going to pray at the start of our service and then Naz is going to come and he's going to lead us in a couple of songs of worship, the words will go up behind me. Please sing along in your homes this morning. And then straight after that, today is National Day of Prayer with regard to the current health crisis that we are encountering as a country. And Alice, our community worker, is going to come and lead us in prayer this morning. And then I'm going to share some um, thoughts um, from God's Word for us. So we're in for a great morning together. It's wonderful having you all. Keep on interacting with us, um, putting on your likes or any comments that you have too. Um, Andrew is now going to come and pray. Thank you. Morning, let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that you are a good, good God. You are good all of the time. And thank you for this ability we have to be able to reach people where they're at. Lord, thank you that your spirit is with in us, Lord. And we just pray this morning as people tune in, Lord, as they as we interact in this new way. Lord, we just pray that you would meet people where they're at. Lord, your Holy Spirit would fill the, the homes of those who are watching now. Lord, that they would be blessed by what we do this morning, Lord. They would be blessed by the worship we give to you. Lord, let us not forget that this is all about Jesus. This has nothing to do with us, nothing about us and, and, and this particular church or anything, Lord, but it's all about Jesus. We want to exalt you and to praise you and to say how much we love you and how much we feel secure and safe because we know we're safe in the arms of Jesus. So, Lord, this morning, bless us. Fill each and every one who turns in to be blessed. Lord, may your Holy Spirit touch them where they are. Lord, may we um, just rejoice this morning and be glad because we're in your presence, wherever that may be. So, Lord, thank you that you are a good, good God. Amen. Let's worship Jesus together this morning. Just because we're not together in body doesn't mean we can't be together in spirit. Wherever we are right now, let's just lift his name high in our households, in our work, wherever we are. Let's just declare the name of Jesus in his place.
God, we thank you that today your word tells us, do not fear. Thank you, Lord, that you are above it all. You are above the storm, Lord. And God, we pray for still hearts, Lord. Lord, we pray that you would take any fear away, any anxieties about this crisis, Lord, because it is in your hands, Jesus. Lord, this is in you our hands. Lord, I pray that you bring peace to this situation, peace that the world cannot offer, but peace that only you can give, God. And Lord, we pray for this valley and for our nation, Lord, and we pray a prayer of protection on it. Lord, we ask that this virus would be back and would be gone in Jesus' name, Lord. God, we know that you are above it, Lord, and you go before us, Lord, and you are with us, Lord. So God, we ask that you be with us right now, Lord. You turn this virus back in Jesus' name. You protect each of our homes, each of our families, each of our workplaces, Lord. God, we pray for the people on the front line in the moment. Lord, we think of those key workers. We think of people in our own congregation and in our own families who are facing this crisis head on. And Lord, we pray you be with them. We pray you strengthen them, Lord. We pray that you protect them, protect them Lord. We pray that you be there with them, Lord, in the hospitals, in the schools, Lord, wherever people may be, be there. And Lord, we pray for our government and our leadership. Lord, this is such a worrying time for so many. And God, the people in charge need your strength, your wisdom, and your power more than ever. So God, we pray for Boris Johnson at this time, Lord. We pray you will help him make the right decisions, Lord. We thank you for the decisions that have been made so far that have kept so many of us safe, Lord. And God, we pray the wise decisions will continue to be made in our government, Lord. So God, we commit this to you. We say that you are God above the stone, Lord, and we worship you this morning, Lord, and we come together and we pray and we ask, Lord, that you step into this health crisis, Lord, and you work a miracle in and through the name of Jesus. Amen. I've entitled these thoughts tomorrow, uh, this, this morning, that I'm bringing to you, um, Christ in the Storm. And I'd like to read um, a passage from the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 6, verses 45 onwards. It says this, Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was all alone on the land. And when he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them, and about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost, and they cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. I'm wondering this morning if you've ever had that experience when you've met somebody that you should know, but you've not recognised them. I remember a good number of years ago now, I was working in a department store in the city centre of Glasgow, and my favourite football team had at that time been suffering and financially were on the verge of bankruptcy when a rich Canadian businessman stepped in to rescue the team. Um, I was at work one day in the suits department in the store when a, a businessman came in, we served him, and then afterwards a colleague said to me, do you know who that was? And I said, well, no, I, I don't. And he said, it was, and he said the name of this rich businessman who had rescued my football club. And I couldn't believe it that the man who saved my football club was standing in front of me, but I didn't recognise him. As we come to this passage of scripture this morning, we see something very similar going on. The disciples 
um, are out on a boat, isolated, in a storm, in the middle of a lake. And Jesus comes to them, walking on the water, but they don't recognise him. Maybe they don't expect Jesus to turn up in the storm. Maybe they don't expect Jesus to be there at that particular time, but I want to say this morning that Jesus reveals himself and turns up even in the storms of life. And I want to bring that encouragement to us all this morning and for us just to unpack this story that we have just for a few minutes and explore some wonderful things from it. Just before this, Jesus had worked a, an amazing miracle. He had fed 5,000 people with five small barley loaves and two small fish. And um, with uh, leftovers afterwards. And it says that immediately after that, he got his disciples to go in a boat and to meet him on the other side of the sea of Galilee. Well, he went up alone to spend time with his father in prayer. I don't know if we can put ourselves in the shoes of the disciples at this time, but they have just gone from a great miracle to a mess. And, I mean, as an onlooker, reading the text, I'm asking questions, well, what was that about? Um, wh where is God? I mean, we know where God was in the feeding of the 5,000, but where is he now? And it's at that point in the narrative that we read the most wonderful words. And the words are simply this. Jesus had his eyes on them. Now, I just want us to pause right there and reflect on those words. They couldn't see Jesus, but Jesus could see them. And I want to say with absolute confidence this morning, I don't know where you're all at, but Jesus does. He sees you. One of the best known um, stories in scripture is a story entitled The Exodus. And it's made famous um, through the film, The Prince of Egypt, and the musical that's out um, just now. But the story begins with the phrase from God saying, I have seen. I have seen the oppression of my people. God is a God who sees. You may not see him today, but he sees you. You may be all at sea, maybe just holding on, maybe frightened in some way, but his eyes are on you. I heard a story some time ago about a lady who needed her, room, uh, her, her living room decorated. The painter and decorator came in to do the job and he took a decorative plaque that she had on the wall and on the plaque was, God is watching. And he took it off the wall and he went to just lay it on the floor and she immediately grabbed it and she said, don't put that on the floor, I need to be able to see it. And the, the decorator was somewhat confused and, uh, and, and he said, well, I'm not being rude, but don't you find that slightly intimidating? God is watching. And she looked at him and she said, oh no, you see, he loves me enough that he can't take his eyes off me. That's the first wonderful truth we see in the story. Jesus is watching. But not just watching, he comes to his disciples. It was about the fourth watch of the night, the Bible says. That's between um, kind of 3 a.m. and um, 6 a.m. Um, I have um, a, a name for 3 a.m. in the morning. I call it stupid o'clock in the morning. You know that time um, when you um, wake up in the night and even the tiniest problems become mountainous challenges? Well, there they are in tiredness, straining painfully at the oars. And the Sea of Galilee is actually only um, uh, roughly eight miles across in its widest place, but they were crossing a narrower stretch. And it says they were in the middle of the, the sea, and so they may well have been straining at the oars for up to nine 
hours. Next time you're in heavy traffic on the A470 going down to Cardiff for rush hour, or, or, or stuck in the Bring Glass tunnels, just think of this, you are probably going way faster than these disciples were at this time. But it's at that point in time that it says that Jesus came to them. And friends, we see something wonderful going on here, because this is the core of what the Christian gospel is all about. It's that Jesus left his place with the Father in heaven, as Jesus left that mountain in prayer with his Father, and he went into the world of darkness and toil, and he met his disciples. So we see this picture of a God who loved us so much that he sent his only son to come into our world of darkness to rescue us so that we can be brought back to where God is. And the, the Bible teaches quite clearly that, that Jesus came to save us. Jesus came to visit us. Each Christmas time we celebrate that his name is Emmanuel, God with us. And because he died and rose again from the grave, we can have that assurance of everlasting life with him and we can have that assurance of knowing that that same Jesus is with us today. So let me say something truly wonderful today. That Jesus is watching, Jesus sees, but Jesus is close. He is with us, even at this time. But here we have the tragedy at the heart of the story. I'm coming back to where I began this um, short message. And it's that Jesus was with them, but they didn't recognize him. Why? Maybe they were just so caught up and absorbed in the struggle at the time that they had even forgotten about Jesus, possibly. Do you know, it's possible for us to get so caught up in the struggle of the moment that we can forget. Or, or maybe, as I said earlier, it's just that they didn't expect Jesus to do this. <laughs> they had been walking with him for some time before this. And yet even those who follow Jesus can be surprised at what Jesus can do. And even those who follow Jesus can sometimes think, oh, Jesus isn't really going to turn up in a storm. Oh, yes, he is. He is with you. And he is with you even today. And so seeing their fear, Jesus spoke a word to them. Pause there. We've seen that Jesus sees. We've seen that Jesus visits. And now, this morning, we see that Jesus has a word to speak to you. Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. I, I, I've heard it said that the phrase, um, do not fear, appears something like 365 times in the Bible. I've not counted them all, but I know it's a tremendous amount of times it appears. I love the thought that it appears 365 times in the Bible, one for each day of the year. But however many times it appears, it appears time and time again in the scriptures that God says to us, don't fear. Why? Because it's quite simple. Fear destroys relationships. Fear um, cripples people. Fear leads people into selfishness. Fear increases stress. Fear makes people panic by and go out to shops and grab and hoard what they can despite everybody else's need around about them. And Jesus says to his disciples, do not fear. And he says it on the basis of him being present. He said, it is I. I am here with you. The I am is with you. Do you know that phrase, I am, is the personal name of God that we see in the story of the Exodus earlier on in the Bible? What a thought that through Christ we have relationship with God and we can say that the Lord the I am is with us, even 
in the storms of life. And that's the point of the story. The point of the story is that Jesus got into the boat and the winds and the waves ceased and they were astonished. Now, the point isn't that if you have Jesus in your boat, everything's going to be plain sailing. Um, absolutely not. We don't walk around in this spiritual bubble uh, and we're completely immune from everything else that happens to us. On the contrary, um, sometimes um, we go into places of difficulty and, and hardship, but we go into those places with Jesus in our boat, the I am in our boat, and he's able to still the storm. is with us. The I am is here. And friends, can I just say that they um, experienced, I would say I learned more about Jesus through the mess than they actually did through the miracle. Mm -hmm. And so we come to the end of the story. It's kind of like a punchline. It's almost like something of a a left hook if you like, because it says that they were astonished. They should have expected that Jesus, the Son of God, would turn up there. But they were astonished. It said, because they hadn't learned from the miracle before, the feeding of the 5,000, because their hearts were hard. Some years ago, I um, had uh, a, a, an issue with my arm. I had pins and needles down my left arm, so I went to my GP. I um, thought that maybe something was wrong with my arm. And um, all the GP kept on asking me was how my neck was. And I said, no, it's my arm. My arm is where the problem is. How's your neck? It's my arm. He asked if I'd been in a road accident or something like that. I said, no, I'm fine. It's my arm. But he um, set up an appointment with a physiotherapist. And the, the physiotherapist was, was pressing around in my neck, pushing and prodding in different places, where all of a sudden she pressed somewhere, and exactly the same symptoms just flooded straight down my arm. And I looked at the GP, and the GP looked at me, and he said, it's your neck. And um, the problem was that I had a stiff neck. The problem was that through my posture that I had adopted and slouching, I had got the stiff neck, and it was affecting everything else. Do you know our postures that we adopt can actually affect everything else? And do you know we can have postures of pride? We can have postures of bitterness. We can have postures of cynicism. We can have postures, maybe as these disciples did in the world that they were in, of religious tradition. And so they weren't able to recognize who Jesus was at that time. And it took a mess for them to see who Jesus was. At this time, let me say to you all, that Jesus sees, that Jesus is here with us, and that Jesus has a word to speak into our hearts and lives. And if we will turn and trust in Jesus to save us, we can know his peace speaking into our hearts, that assurance, the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid. The Savior of the world is standing before you. Don't miss him. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, as each Sunday we open up your word and we do it today online, it, it feels different in many ways, but it's still your word. And I pray that it will reach deep down into our hearts and into our lives at this point in time. Lord, that you will indeed just um, encourage us all and Lord, make us a blessing to the world around about us. With Lord, as a church, as we do all we can to reach out to our community and help those who are most vulnerable at this time. Lord, in the efforts that are going to be taking place again this week, lead us and guide us, and may we know what it is to know you are with us. And Lord, I pray for everybody tuning in, everybody listening today, Lord, that even in their homes, that they would know you see, you visit us, and you have a word to speak into our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just worship Jesus one more time together. Christ is 